And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to you, to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today and tonight is about love the commandment, the mandate, the monday that we love one another. And most importantly, God's love for us in the person of Jesus Christ, a deep, agonizing, messy, and real love. Monday Thursday, both scripturally and liturgically, is a, is a busy day and night. Foot washing and meal and commandment and betrayal and denial and singing in the garden of Gethsemane, agony, more betrayal, more denial, stripping and beating. And imprisonment. It's nearly a whole chapter in the Gospel of Mark and four chapters in the Gospel of John that tell about the events of this day. It's full and it's fraught with meaning of a deep love calling deep love out of us all. And I am with you across airwaves and cables and space and I join you once again being overwhelmed by the depth and the breadth and the weight of God's love for us. That Jesus walked and taught and healed and cried and proclaimed. That Jesus stood with those that the world would stand against. That Jesus sat and dined with sinners and saints alike. That Jesus knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples, even Judas, who would betray him. That there is no part of ourselves that is hidden from God. That still God sees all of our dirt and loves us. So much so that Christ was taken and gave thanks and broken and given for the world. Tonight we remember that though we will not receive until we can all receive again, we remember that institution of the Holy Eucharist at the Last Supper. We remember Christ saying to us, This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. A profound expression of love. And so today is a day of love and longing. And this Holy Thursday night, we remember that after they had gathered in that home, 
and of an upper room. They too were behind doors and walls in a house, much like we are. And that after they gathered for this meal, they went out to the Mount of Olives, to the place called Gethsemane, a garden of olive trees where Jesus was agitated in distress and would pray, while Peter, James, and John would be found sleeping. Love. Real, deep, sacrificial love, it is weighty. Beloved, the word Gethsemane means oil press. And to press olives from, um, to press olives takes an immense amount of weight in order to get oil. First, the olives are crushed by a rolling stone, often rolled around a pivot by several donkeys. And the crushed olives are then gathered into baskets and crushed under a lever using stones weighing hundreds of pounds. Heavy weight. Jesus goes into the garden of Gethsemane, the garden of the oil press, to pray. And that weight, I imagine it presses on him. We are told that Jesus is deeply grieved. Some use the word agony. Jesus has an oil press love, a Gethsemane love. Our God loves us in a way that we can only glimpse at or imagine. Washing the feet of the one who betrayed him, calling the one who denied him three times to go and feed his sheep, forgiving those who saw to it that he was stripped and beaten and crucified. Our God in Jesus loves in a way that is deep and agonizing and messy and real. And it is to this sacrificial oil press love that we are given, invited to emulate. Mande comes from that word mandatum, which means commandment. And Jesus says to us this night, I give you a new commandment that you are to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another with an oil press love. Watch, pray, and love. You are God's beloved. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. With all our heart, with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our cities, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Reveal the light of your presence to those who are in danger, sorrow, sickness, or any other adversity. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember especially those we now name silently or aloud, <clears throat> that they may be comforted and strengthened in the love of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We commend 
extend to your mercy all who have died, especially those we now name silently or aloud, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This hour we turn to you, O Lord, in full knowledge of our frailty, our vulnerability, and our great need as your mortal creatures. We cry to you as one human family, unsure of the path ahead, unequal to the unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and death that seem all too real to us now. Stir up your strength and visit us, O Lord. Be our shield and rock and hiding place. Guide our leaders, our scientists, our nurses and doctors. Give them wisdom and fill their hearts with courage and determination. Make even this hour, O oh Lord, a season of blessing for us, that in fear we find you mighty to save, and in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all our infirmities, even Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave to you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this the world should know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you.